Hello everyone, welcome back. Okay, so today the topic is about uh, investment appraisal technique. So this will be a very short revision, more for students who are preparing for the uh, CET exams, especially pertaining to financial management and also the paper F9 of the ACCA. So welcome back and my name is Xia Wildi and then uh, if you have any questions on this video, please feel free to drop me an email at wildy. 231 at gmail.com Alright, so while this video is pertaining to the ACCA and the CAT program, it is also relevant to degree level programs as well. Alright, so let's begin with what we are going to talk about. So in investment appraisal, generally there are quite a variety of methods and these methods basically serve one uh, very important purpose because if you think about um, yourself you know operating a business the first thing that you do you know in assessing a project is a very simple uh, initial investigation correct you do your initial investigation and then where you think about uh, whether the project would be feasible whether the project would be viable but you do not de do any uh, you know de detailed study yet so after the initial investigation, you might find that okay, it's uh, viable, it's feasible. Then what you may do next is a detailed evaluation. Now, detailed evaluation is where the business men and perhaps the accountant and whatever stakeholders in charge would actually look into the exact details like the cash forecast, right? The exact financial estimates, the exact financial figures. And then methods like your accounting rate of return would be used to assess the project and see whether in terms of profitability, you know, it's worth the trouble to embark on the project. And what else? And there is the other method which will be used in this detailed evaluation, that's the payback period, right? And of course, we also use the next method known as the, uh, okay, the other method known as the payback discounted method okay payback itself has two variants one is the simple payback whereas the other one is the discounted payback we understand the difference in the wall all right and then of course there is the net present value method right and the last one which is the internal rate of return these methods are very crucial in the detailed evaluation stage and of course if these met if these methods prove that the project is viable then of course you go to the stage where you know you go for approval by senior management right and then the rest will follow okay so these methods that you see here they are of two types okay you can group them into the first one which is known as the non-discounted cash flow method so these methods that you see here these two which is the accounting rate of return and the simple payback these are referred to as the non-discounted cash flow method the second set of methods that you see below here right here the discounted payback and net present value method and also the internal rate of return these methods are known as the discounted cash flow techniques all right so let me explain to you how the accounting rate of return works okay right so the accounting rate of return what does it really do right the accounting rate of return method basically measures the return from then from an investment and that return on investment is measured right based on accounting profits so if you think about it this method is like your return on investment right it is a bit like your return on capital employed yep the reasoning the understanding is actually similar <clears throat> the formula for you for calculating this accounting rate of return again would be similar to these two here that you are looking at and the formula goes like this ARR is equals to average profit divided by average investment 
okay of course uh this formula may vary depending on you know the question you're looking at or also depending on the context in some cases it may not be average investment but instead it could be initial investment so beware of that however if it's average investment then it's very simple all you have to do is just simply take the initial investment cost plus the scrap the value of the investment and what you do is that you divide it by two that's how you get the average investment whilst the average profit really refers to average profit per year so which means that if the profits vary from year to year all you need to do is just do an average and find out how much is the average per year right so that's the accounting we have written now there are some uh, advantages of it well the advantage here is that it's easy to understand but right, obviously because uh, the understanding is similar to ROI and ROCE and the other advantage is that the information required to calculate is easily available because these are accounting data all right now certain downsides to it is that well this method isn't perfect why because um, profits are less reliable compared to cash flows okay, why so because profits may be affected by accounting adjustments it may be affected by accounting policies and all those would affect <coughs> profits so unlike cash flows which are less likely to be affected by different accounting treatments and uh, different accounting policies well and of course one more issue is that it doesn't account for the time value of money which is a severe shortcoming of the ARR method all right <clears throat> now of course the next method that is also used in assessing an investment is the payback period method okay all right so in my video here I'm going to explain what is the simple payback I'll leave the discounted payback to another video <clears throat> right so basically the simple payback method calculates the length of time taken to recover well the cost of the investment obviously the shorter the time the better right well <clears throat> there are quite a few ways to calculate the payback period method and one of those formulas that we do use is we take the initial investment cost and we divide it by the yearly cash flows yearly net cash flows now note this method has uh, the assumption that the yearly net cash flows would be the same if the net yearly net cash flows are a bit different then from year to year then you have to perform more detailed workings which I'll explain to you in another video alright so what's the advantage of using payback method well the advantage is that it focuses on projects which gives you quick payback and then as a result you improve or your business improves in terms of liquidity all right because all the projects that will be favored will be those that give you quick payback and that really announces liquidity right what else well of course the other thing is that um it is easy to understand all right the downside of it okay is that well this method actually fails to account for long-term profitability which is a bad thing because all this method is focusing on is when do you get back your money and then in the in reality long term we have to look at profitability okay so this method has such weaknesses and then the other weakness is of course it fails to account for time value of money which is well one of the severe downsides all right of course there are many other downsides to the payback method all right and what about the next one which we'll go through all right the next method is the net present value method now the net present value method has many definitions and one definition of uh, net present value method is that it is actually the sum of present values of future cash flows and that minus 
less the initial investment cost. So that is what we mean by the net present value method. <coughs> now the net present value method uh, could be, you know, to for you to calculate it, you also need one very important thing, which is the discount rate. All right. Now I will have to give you the example in another video because uh, in this video I'm trying to give you a summary of all these methods. All right. So if you need the example, it'll be in the next video. So there are quite a, way, a few ways that we can present the workings and one of it is that uh, we can present it like this by year, right? maybe like three years and then we could have like the net cash flow right? and then with the discount rate here and then followed by the present value. So it could work like this, you know, if it's a, you know, if it's a payment then it comes with brackets, maybe say a hundred, right? if it's a positive cash flow then it could be a hundred, you know, without the bracket, maybe two hundred in the following year, maybe say not year three could be year two for example right so the column here right the discount rate depends on what rate you're looking at if it's 10 percent then you have to refer to the discount table and extract the rate so for 10 percent one year will be 0 0.909 period two would be 0 0.826 okay for year zero for information it is always discount rate of one regardless of the percentage therefore to get the present value what you need to do is to take net cash flow multiplied by discount rate that will give you your present value right like that okay so do that and then basically fill in the blanks and then net of the result here gets you net present value right <laughs> as simple as that now uh, for net present value to you know so long as the result here is positive generally the project or the investment is worth proceeding with. However, if you see that the result here is a negative, it means that this project is not worth proceeding with. Generally, a positive answer means that if you embark on the project on investment, you will lead to maximization of shareholder wealth. All right. This method is generally quite preferred in many businesses because uh, some reasons for that number one is that it actually accounts for time value of money <coughs> the second advantage of this is that it actually uses cash flows which we believe that is far more reliable than accounting profits so it is definitely a much more preferred method than you know the AR method. The downside is that what about the suitable discount rate? How would you know that the discount rate should be 10%? How would you know that it would be 20%? The truth is that it is very difficult to determine what is the suitable discount rate in reality. The other issue is that there is also much difficulty in forecasting cash flows. The truth is cash flows are subject to many variables like maybe say changes in business conditions in the following years or maybe changes in costs. All these are very difficult to forecast when you're looking at a period of up to five years. All right. So that's generally the problems with using the net present value method. And the last method which is a very uh, useful method we term that as the internal rate of return basically the internal rate of return method aims to find that the discount rate which provides and results in a net present value of zero you could refer to this discount rate as a so-called break-even rate all right now the formula to calculate this internal rate of return simply is to take a plus A over A minus B multiplied by B minus A. Now the definition of this. Okay, so basically to determine the internal rate of return, there are a, a couple of ways and one, one method of doing so is using uh, formula. Of course the other way is to use the Excel spreadsheet where you, there is a formula to determine the internal rate of return. All right. Now if you do it on with a pen and paper then 
you could rely on this formula. This formula requires a few inputs. One is the discount rate and the MPV. So you will need to fill in the A which is the lower discount rate which gives you a positive MPV. And you need to fill in the other value which is the negative B discount rate. Okay? Not negative B but rather the B discount rate which gives you a negative MPV. So you need these two sets of numbers. The moment you have these numbers, fill in the blanks, that gives you the internal rate of return that results in a net present value of zero. This method is generally quite uh, well quite well accepted. Right? It has many advantages. One is that it actually accounts for time value of money. Okay, quite attractive. Okay, one of the uh, benefits of using this method and of course the other method is that it uses cash flows which is of course more reliable than profits now realize that the benefits is similar to MPV yes they are similar right all right more reliable than profits okay there are some downsides as in this method suffers from the problem that sometimes internal rate of return may result in multiple answers which then which answer to use right it has this problem right especially for cash flows that are unconventional right another issue with internal rate of return is that it makes it a very um it suffers from that similar problem which is that it requires a forecast of future cash flows and it is difficult to forecast future cash flows with accuracy all right so these are generally the problems of uh, the internal rate of return and the problems of internal rate of return is similar to mpv except that internal rate of return doesn't suffer from the problem of determining what's an appropriate discount rate because for internal rate of return there is no uh, there is no need to determine what's the appropriate discount rate what you need is uh, the discount rate which gives you a positive MPV and the other discount rate which is the higher discount rate which gives you a negative MPV. The moment you have these two sets of values you could easily determine the internal rate of return. Alright so with that I have explained to you both methods and both are quite important right, in assessing uh, whether a project is viable whether a project is worth proceeding with. Alright so with that uh, there are certain things which I have not covered, you may want to watch out for my following video on that. Uh, that's the examples as well as how about the discounted payback. Right, we will talk about it in the following videos. Meantime, right, I'm Xiao Will D and then if you have any quer queries, do drop me a mail at wildy231 at gmail.com. Hope that you have enjoyed the video and have a good day. Right, take care.